Uh, what are we seeing? I, and I'm assuming, um, just guessing here, that the news on the airlines, on social media, in terms of sentiment and uh, amount of plans for people traveling, uh, probably not picking up quite yet. No, definitely not. Obviously, it's way down. Um, and when it's actually two different questions. If you're talking about the number of people talking about traveling, uh, it's certainly down. Like uh, if we, we look at um, United, the current pace for the current quarter is down around, I think, 35 percent of year over year. And I know that airlines in general are down. They're, they're cutting flights by about 60 percent. Uh, so obviously, less people are flying. We knew that. What's kind of interesting, though, when you look at the happiness and positive versus negative, when people are talking about these airlines, it's off a little bit, but it's not off that much. Uh, and so I don't think that people are too upset with the airlines. Uh, you know, there, there's less people flying, so there's less people to complain. But when you look at something like the cruise lines, people are very unhappy in general. And they, they have they share thoughts of, you know, maybe being stranded on a cruise ship for a long period of time because that's in the news. Um, they're not really talking about getting sick on airplanes or anything like that. So um, the the sentiment around airlines, I think, is that people aren't really blaming them for any of this. And uh, there's not a negative, um, I guess there's not a negative connotation with airlines right now, more so than normal. So obviously people are definitely traveling less and they're they're talking about traveling less, but the, the happiness indicators are not moving down significantly right now. Yeah, and so, so Landon, when you're when you're talking about the sentiment indicators, for the one thing that I would kind of question about that is, I know what you mean by that because it's basically you know your experience with an airline, and I'm sure they would have had you know damage to that sentiment if they would have had issues with refunds and cancellations. But is it really possible for them to have an impact to sentiment if no one's flying at all? And right now, you know, we know that the, you know, the flights are down to basically bare minimums and only, you know, required travel in order for people to get home or whatever it may be. You know, I think it would make sense that, you know, there's really probably just not that many people talking about the airlines at all in, in terms of because they're not really traveling on them. So what's more important for these companies? Is it going to be, you know, coming out of this okay from a, you know, where the consumer's loyalties land? Or is it just going to be able to survive this move where there's no demand at all and hoping that there's not a consumer trend shift that's so damaging to this space uh, that, you know, it's basically changed forever? Yeah, I don't. I don't see a massive trend shift where people all of a sudden decide they don't need to fly anymore. Uh, I do think that there's going to be more people doing remote work and maybe there's some remote meetings, but um, you guys know there's a lot of value in actually meeting people face to face. And I don't think that um, as far as business travel goes, I doubt that's going to go away. And then, of course, people love to go on vacation and there may be more people now that want to go on a vacation than ever before. Uh, when we look up at pent, pent up demand, which is people talking about, I wish I could do these things. I wish I could go flying right now, or I wish I could go see my friend or go um, on vacation or whatever it may be. Uh, there's been a significant uptick in that. It's about 25% over the last month. And so uh, before people couldn't wait to do it, now they really, really can't wait to do it. And so um, I think the demand will be there. I think also, though, you bring up a good point about survivability. Uh, a lot of these companies are not poised um, financially to survive this. And so, you know, we look at America and they have a massive uh, debt to EBITDA ratio and it's really high. I mean, it is over four, whereas a company like Southwest is about 0.6. So uh, it really comes down to how much cash they have and how much debt they have, whether or not that, you know, these bailouts will get there for them. So I know there's a lot of uh, political controversy about stocks buying back, our companies buying back their stocks and then asking for handouts about the same amount. Um, if those CEOs are playing it very interestingly. It's going to be interesting to see how all that plays out. But uh, they've got to get through this. And no customers right now is obviously very taxing on the revenue side of that. Alex? Yeah, Sean, jump in here. Uh, I want to get your thoughts on uh, Landon's you know, data so far, but also any questions you may have on this space in general. Yeah, I guess it would be, are you seeing in terms of, of purchase intent? I saw a headline that there's already people booking up cruise trips uh, out into 2021 uh, at the moment. Are you seeing a, a noticeable difference in that intent to purchase between the airlines and the cruise uh, liners? 
Yeah, that's a good question. And, and actually, yeah, we, we do see some people talking about booking cruises early. Um, and yeah, they're going pretty far out. I think the refund policies are going to be really important. Uh, I know that uh, a lot of the airlines are changing their refund policies so that to give customers that, I guess, added confidence that, hey, just in case this thing isn't over by the time your plans come up, you can get your money back. Uh, so that's really nice. Uh, but yes, definitely people are talking more about doing cruises farther out uh, than they are planes. But I do think that it's coming back. You've got that pent up demand. And while mentions of these airlines are definitely down, they're not down tremendously. They're not rock bottom. So people are still talking about doing it. Uh, and the further out that you can book, I think the more likely people are to book. And that's going to come down to which airline do you prefer. And, and you know, happiness is going to play a big role in that. We showed that chart earlier. We've got Southwest and, and Delta at the top and American and United kind of at the bottom. Uh, so it really just comes down to perception and when is this going to be over? So that's always the big question. Landon, uh, follow up on that particular point, I would assume that you know any purchase intent increases that you see in the cruise liners correspond with increased purchase intent for the airlines. Unless you live in a port city, you've got to get to that port city in some way. Uh, and also, I would say that in terms of, you know, overall perception of a particular, you know, area in this leisure and activity space, in terms of damage to that, uh, you know, that picture, I would say the cruise liners probably carried the, the brunt of that in terms of some of the you know, the images and, and situations that occurred as a result of this pandemic on those particular cruise ships, that if people are willing to go back to that particular part of this market, I'm assuming they're probably gonna be pretty excited to get back on airplanes as well. Sure, I mean, yes, absolutely. There's some nasty images, people being stuck on boats and forced to being staying on them. Um, you know, the happiness around like Royal Caribbean and Carnival were down around 20%, which is a really big number when you're talking on a zero to 100 scale. That is a significant move. Um, and airlines are just off a few percentage points. And so while they're still looking at booking, and like Sean says, they're booking pretty far out. And generally speaking, you can't book planes that far out. I think usually you can go about six to eight months on airlines. Um, and so maybe people are booking at the end of 2020, even early 2021, and they're just going to figure out their planes right later. Uh, but I will say that, you know, just looking at some of the rates out there, um, there are some really cheap flights. And if they are offering free cancellation like Southwest has always done, or maybe like some other airlines are starting to do, uh, it doesn't hurt to go ahead and book some flights that you might be taking and uh, cancel them later. So um, there are some smart consumers that are doing that. And then there's the people that just can't wait to get out of the house that are going ahead and booking something uh, really far out in the future, like Sean's talking about, and just hopes of eventually this gets over and we can go have some fun. I, I think it's an interesting point. Uh, Landon, kind of final thoughts here uh, before I give Sean the last words. Um, the real question is, okay, what does this mean for the investor? What does this mean for the trader? We know these stocks have, you know, basically we have the chart up there on the board right now. You can see the amount of destruction in the price of these particular names. Has it been enough? Is it too much? Is it too unknown right now? At what point, if you're someone who's looking to be, whether that's a trader or a long-term investor, is it, is it uh, you know, the point where you can maybe dip your toes in from the long side? Are we there yet or not quite? Uh, you know, personally, I think that if you're if you're a bargain hunter type shopper, this is going to appeal to you. But I would also say there's a lot of companies that have been decimated that have strong demand and that don't have issues directly correlated uh, to this quarantine. And so I would look elsewhere as far as getting a bargain company. Uh, these are on sale quite a bit, and I do think that they will recover over time. But I also think there's some better bargains out there. I know Roku came out today uh, and, and announced that subscribers, or I'm sorry, that, that devices are flying off the shelves because people are staying home. Things like that really didn't take a lot of, um, you know, it wasn't a surprise to anyone, I guess, in that, of course, people are staying home and buying more devices. So look for more opportunities around things that are benefiting from this. Um, and like Folio, we like to highlight those kind of companies. And so, yes, the airlines are tremendously on sale, but I'd shy away from them right now. 